We're live. Now we're live. It, 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 Hello, it's, uh, people. It's live the whole time you were doing this. Oh, it didn't say it didn't say it on my end. And my end's the one that it's running off of. Hello, people of the internet. Welcome to another video here on Pez of the Mind. I am James Phoenix. With me is Chris the Mole. Hello, people. And Anastasia the Laser Beam. Hello. Sorry, Mom, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, it's fine. Okay. Anyway, um, this is a new video series we're going to be trying, and I thank Mo for coming up with the idea for this. I think it'll be fun. I thank me too. Indeed. She doesn't thank you because she's a bitch. Anyway. Oh, wow, you stupid cunt. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, this is a show that we're calling Pointless Conversation. The basic premise being that we're going to start with a very, very simple topic. Uh, but one that is also equally broad, and we're just going to basically start talking about it. We're going to see where the conversation goes, and we'll go for maybe 30 minutes and see where we end up. So uh, today's topic, I was given the privilege of picking the first topic for this program, and so I chose to go with the topic of history. So that's going to be our conversation topic. Yep. Yep. So... <clears throat> I was just recently watching um, uh, watch Doctor Strange, and there's a lot of history that happens because <laughs> he has the time stone, and he kept making everything go back. And so far from the apple to one of my favorite action scenes where he makes the whole like uh, you know scene go in reverse, and like they have to deal with all like the I don't know rubble and like traffic and everything and water and all the stuff that go in reverse. You know that was a really cool aspect of time. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. It's um, definitely history. <laughs> but. I'll say, in my opinion, history, I will just say it's equally imp as important as it is propaganda. I'd agree with that because, you know, it's the winners mm -hmm. that write the history. It's true. Yeah. Like, for example, one of our great leaders of all time, Winston Churchill. Everyone knows who the fuck Churchill is. Yes. Mm -hmm. He's honored, and he, people talk about him being the greatest Englishman that ever lived, and all the other bullshit. And you're like, okay, that's fair. He did lead us through an important period, and that, and what he did is fucking awesome. And he, him leading us like that was fantastic. However, he's also famous for allowing the deaths of a lot of African people, mm. and only, and the only complaint he had was they shouldn't be allowed to fire at white people. Hmm. Which you could make the case to be fair at the time everyone was racist. However, he's still responsible for the death of a lot of them, which isn't cool. And that's what I mean. Like, if you look at a lot of historical figures, if you actually dig close enough to it, mm -hmm. you find that they've done a lot of atrocities or yeah. they're kind of shitheads or they're not actually that great they some people just stumble into the greatness and when when it actually happens they get hailed as like these big icons and every time they're perceived in t film tv and all the other stuff afterwards and all the books afterwards and stuff, because it's like we said written by the written by the winners they're hailed as these big noble perfect perfect people yeah Like, Abraham Lincoln isn't exactly perfect, but no. whenever you see him and stuff, he's always hailed as perfect. Yeah, he's always hailed as, like, you know, oh, like, freedom of the slaves and everything. But honestly, he didn't give a rat's ass about the slaves. He just wanted to preserve the Union more more often than that. Like, the slaves were there kind of in the background, but he was more <laughs> concerned as with this country staying one country and not two. Like, that was his primary focus. Yeah, yeah he actually plus, we all saw how his hat is. His <laughs> hat. I'll be honest. If I was sat in a theater trying to watch a play and some fucking cunt sat in front of me with a giant top hat, I'd shoot him too. <laughs> Maybe I've misunderstood his death. <laughs> you might have. <laughs> but, you know, and Lincoln actually did give a speech at one point where he said, look, you know, it wasn't necessarily about the slaves, you know. And like you said, it was about preserving the Union, and he actually said, if I could have preserved the Union by letting everybody keep slaves, I would have done that. If I could have preserved the Union by saying, okay, these people get to have slaves and these people don't, I would have done that. 
Yeah. You know, whatever I need to do to preserve the Union, and it happened to be that freed the slaves. And by the way, that's another historical detail people miss. He only freed the slaves in the South. Yeah, but there weren't there really weren't slaves. that many left in the North, but there were some, and he didn't push yeah. it on those countries that were either like on the border or considering joining the North. He didn't push it for them. He only pushed it for the ones that were in open rebellion. Yeah. Which, as far yeah. as they were concerned, he had no authority over anyway. Yeah, but mm. it would also be worth noting. With him doing it to the south, which had a larger portion, it makes a bigger statement, and the stuff spreads. True. Yeah. Also, you could argue that any of the slaves in the north would have a way better chance of escaping than they would in the south, because that's where the resistance was like, that's where you escape to, you know? So I imagine people would be more likely or have more allies there to help you. Hi, Rorschach. Yep. Which that does make sense, and yeah, there's various times as well through history. Like, people say we're the worst, we're not. No, like, one big thing I will say about history, which I'm not sure if Jim and Pew will agree on this or not, but I don't like how uh, this is gonna sound like a weird sentence. Allow me to finish the thought though. I don't like how much of a villain Hitler is portrayed as. See, what I mean by that isn't that he was, wasn't evil. He was fucking horrible. Mm-hmm. However, everyone that's the worst person ever always gets compared to Hitler. <laughs> and, he's, and he's responsible for less deaths than Stalin. I was say, what about, like, um, eventually when they come up to the amount of, like, fast food people and stuff? Like, how about McDonald's and stuff? Are we are we anywhere near there yet? Or we're, we're yeah. counting? Just give us another decade or two? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but you see what I mean? It's like, oh, this is the worst person ever. Oh, you're basically Hitler, like people use on the internet. Or they use the Hitler argument all the time. No one mentioned Stalin, who was responsible for more deaths. To his own people. Yep. The only reason Hitler's brought up is because he posed a threat to the West, or to our countries, I should say. Yep. And as a result, because our countries write more of the history, they villainize him way more. Like, people forget, like, he did, like, the paintings and Mm -hmm. some of the stuff he did. Arguably, he wanted to make his country better. I well, don't agree with the, it. well, after the decimation of World War One in Germany, Germany was like a shit show, and he wanted to bring Germany back. So, like, the want was there, the need was there. There was the people who were most desperate and stuff, you know, with all the reparations and everything from World War One. Yeah, that's entirely the point. Is you know, it's it's valid if you look at history. That um, I don't remember the exact time frame, but I want to say it was thirty eight. It was like you know before the war kicked off, which mm-hmm. was in thirty nine. Um, if Hitler had died in nineteen thirty eight, he would have gone down in history as one of the greatest Germans of all time. Because he came in, you know, he came into power as a representative of the people who were unhappy with the government. You know, he got their economy back on track. You know, he 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 cre- he was responsible for the autobahn being built. He created Volkswagen so Germans could have an affordable car. You know, he he rebuilt their military up so that they were a respectable country again. I mean, he brought them back for the brink of, you know, absolutely you no. Know, absolute disaster. I mean, their their economy too. Their economy was in the garbage. Their economy was at the point where the wives of the workers, because women didn't really work back then. Um, the, but the oh, wives no. of the workers were actually going. Oh, um, <laughs> the wives of the workers were actually going to their husbands' jobs to pick up a portion of their paycheck in the midday around lunchtime, and then the rest at the end of the day, because the money was literally worth half as much as it was at the end of the day as it was at the beginning of the day. Their economy and their currency was tanking that fast. And, and that is true. And I will ask Jim. Yep. Are you plugged in? I am now. Okay, because midway through that, you broke up a little bit, and your picture just went completely black. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I realize can't we see we, you at all. Oh, that's weird, because I'm right here, and I am plugged in. Uh, well, I, I can't see you at all after you broke up once. Pew hasn't broke up once on this, but I, you know, I, didn't, I didn't see your video. I just saw a black screen. Can you see me now? I see Hello. the Pez, Pez logo. Yeah. Hello. Testing. We can hear you. We just can't see you. I mean, it's an improvement. We still technically need to see you. Well, like I said, I, I can see me. I don't know why you're not seeing me. Because uh, maybe you have to unplug it in, plug it back in. Because that's what I've done before. Let me leave it off for a second. See. Uh... Mm-hmm. Or leave, come back in. Uh, that that sometimes helps you. 
Yeah, let me turn this. Let me just turn that back on. Can you see me now? No. No, nope, still nothing. All right, hang on. I don't want to do that. I want to exit the car. Oh. Yep, and I want to say sorry about the technical hiccups, people. But yeah, there's lots of stuff with history that bugs film people. Uh, but like I said, that history also is filled with a lot of bloodshed. Mhm. Mm like if you look at like like just look at English history and look at like the Tudor War, the Tudors, and stuff like that, there is a lot of bloodshed in the name of whatever fictional god people have created and various other stuff. Obviously, that that wasn't just over the gods and stuff, but a lot of wars have been. Yeah. But there's way too much bloodshed, and I like a lot of the old. And when you look back in history, a lot of their rulers are way way harder than any of the stuff we've seen in our lifetime. Yeah, yeah. that's what I was like telling other people um, about violent video games is that people were violent before video games. Okay, so come on, just just chill. Yeah. <laughs> They were. However, I will also make a case. Some people have found that some violent video games, depending, but they do have age rating, so it's partly the parent fault at the same time. If a kid goes around shooting and stuff, it does desensitize them enough that they think that a lot, a lot of kids do then associate that as fun. Yeah. yeah. And if they get a gun, their first instinct will be to shoot people. And there have been. There <laughs> it's have a good been. job America doesn't have guns and men make video games telling people to shoot people. And then make movies where the hero is someone who shoots a bunch of people. It's a good job they wouldn't do that. There has been a bunch of studies that says it can cause a slight increase to aggression, but nothing that would make a person otherwise have their behavioral to change. Um, you know, it wouldn't turn like a good person into a bad person. If you were already generally that way before, it's not going to change you. There's also been a load of studies that show, depending on the age, when kids are more susceptible to the world around mm -hmm. them and are more influenced by the stuff around them, mm -hmm. they can get influenced by violent games. I don't think boo violent games is the way to go. There should just be harsher laws on making sure kids don't get them. Just like, hey, just don't buy your kids. Like, just stick with the laws we have. Like, just, oh, I'm not going to buy my five-year-old an M-rated game, okay? Like, yeah. I just stick to the I box. Completely, I completely agree with that. Like, yes. a kid should not be bought Call of Duty or Grand Theft Auto. No. Mm -hmm. However, those games should not be told they shouldn't exist because adults will enjoy them. Yeah. And when kids get older, they may find they enjoy them too when they're adults. That's fine. Yeah. That, that's my case. Though I will also say with history and stuff like that as well, well, uh, well no, kind of this because we've moved on to more violence and stuff, I will say that is one issue I do have with, I can't believe I'm going to have to say this, with your country. Okay. I'm going to make a case right now. Which side, as people do, left or right, is against guns? Strictly, uh, generally speaking, the left is the common, commonly accepted one. Yes. Which side creates most of the media, which showcases people shooting people all the time and glorifies the guns? The right? No, that'd be the left also, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the point. It's a major hypocrisy. I'm, I was going to say probably evenly on both because I've seen a lot of both. Well, yeah, I mean, if you watch, like, the NRA channel, the right-wing shows are just fucking insane. That's with actual yeah. guns, but still. Yeah, they are, yeah. but to be fair, you can also get fucking insane left-wing ones. Yeah, yeah. Try to glorifying drugs and shit, but it's like, yeah. My, my point was just one side more than like the right side of, traditionally favors mm -hmm. guns. The left side is against guns, but then the left side then produces a load of media telling people guns are cool. Yep. Which means I'm arguing they don't really care about that issue. Mm -hmm. And the other cruelly ironic thing about that is if you look at statistics. In terms of our government, like, for example, when Obama was the president, gun sales were through the roof when the left was in charge. Yep. When Trump got elected, the gun sales went down. Yeah, but that's for a different reason. No, I'm just making I'm just making the point that it's actually the left are the ones that gets guns, but ironically, because the left are hated, they're the ones that cause gun sales indirectly. Uh, yes and no. The reason the gun sales increased with Obama versus Trump is with Obama, they were worried he was going to make harsher gun laws and it was going to stop people getting them. So it's more of a panic of running out and buying them at the last minute before you might not be able to buy some in a few months' time. Whereas with Trump, if you believe he's not going to do that, 
you're not in a rush to go do it. It's sort of like, like let's say Jim bought, how can I put this in Jim terminology? Let's say Jim bought all five members of the original Power Ranger action figures, and then he got told only one store has the Green Ranger in stock to go and complete his collection. He's going to run out and buy that green one at ASAP. But if he's suddenly told the green one sold absolutely fucking everywhere and he doesn't need to worry about it, he's going to wait. That's fair. Mm-hmm. He'll and be more be, lenient with that. To be fair, I think, um, at least if I'm remembering correctly, Bomas had a number of occasions so people more assumed he was going to take away the gun loss because he's on the left side. But I think he was on a scene like of stuff recently. He just wanted to make the gun laws um, not necessarily more strict, but more on the verification basis of like having better records because they're like, or yeah. at least digitizing a gun record. Like at the very least, um, you could um, look up gun owners, like you can look up car registration. He wasn't really yeah. trying to do anything yeah. to restrict it, just to better identify who the gun holders are. Yeah, it's that thing of mm-hmm. the perception creates mm-hmm. the false yeah. equivalent. Like, for example, and people are going to be shocked by this one as well, but mm-hmm. it's like with the election, a lot of people assumed Trump was definitely going to just lose by a landslide. Mm-hmm. But a lot of people were too lazy to go out and vote against him because they're like, fuck it, my side's already going to win. Who cares? It's only one vote, but if it's only one vote, and it happens multiple times, it can be bad. And I know people are going to say the, the electoral colleges and stuff, that's a completely different debate. Mm-hmm. That's more to stop like free states owning your entire country. But it's a case of, with that one, at the votes, like, I argue if more people had gone out and actually voted like they wanted to, instead of assuming they were going to win, they probably would have won by a landslide and it would have changed because the, electron- the electoral colleges saw, wait a minute, Everyone's voting this way by a fucking landslide. They might change their decision more, especially the ones that said they voted for Trump and they were on the fence which way to go. If they saw that every single person voted for one side versus the other, they wouldn't have voted Mm. that way. You get a chance to make up your mistakes on whatever side you liked or if you didn't like in the 2020. So, yep. And technically, speaking, technically, and technically speaking, the one side did get three million more popular votes, but that wasn't enough to change anybody's mind. So fair enough. Well, no, yeah, that's what I mean. Well, I think it, it wasn't, in the, it wasn't in as much state. in terms mm-hmm. of percentages. Yeah, but the, those votes have to be allocated in proper states to get their own proper um, I know. electoral votes. More of how the government works, but I'm always making the point that if people have voted, they might have changed, you know, yeah. electoral votes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and, it, and and it wasn't just a, and it wasn't just people who you know who did that too. It was also people who just you know got to the, just refused to vote at all because they thought both candidates were shit. So that didn't help either. Oh, oh no, there is that, but it's also the same thing hap- has happened over here before now with leaders. Where if it's printed, say it's printed Wednesday, like the Wednesday before an election, this side is going to win chances are that side's going to win instead because this because basically that side won't vote as well because also you'll get a load of people assuming oh well we're going to win we don't need to vote yeah right why waste why why do i why should i spend five minutes in my time guaranteeing the future with whichever person i believe in when fuck it, already won. Fuck it. Yeah. This is extra. This is extra time to watch fucking my. That's probably course. um. That's probably the worst when like places like Florida or other places take really long to vote when it's already been done. So you might as well like just tell them to go home because they you know there's no way even if they won that state it still wouldn't work out. Like there's yeah. been elections like that are just really shitty. It's like no, yeah. you can just turn around. <laughs> Fine. In Florida, they already assume the election's going to go one way or the other. They're all busy. Over in Magic Kingdom. No, I just mean like sometimes where they've already won enough electoral college votes yeah. um, that like they don't really need the state because whether they win or lose it, they still win. Yeah. Yeah. I know, and it's it's but it's just funny when that happens. I never assumed like, that because because I mean you know Bush versus Gore came down to Florida. Yeah. Yep. Well, Bush versus Gore just sounds like some sort of fucking sex tape. It does. It really does. If you're into that, check out hashtag knifing Jim Phoenix. Bush versus yeah. Gore. <laughs> Bush versus Gore sounds like what if there was a sexy parody on the Saw franchise? Coming to your theater near you by Jim Phoenix. And I will say the parody no. is a sexy parody on the Saw films. 
Yeah. I will say, if one of my favorite erotic takes on a film of all time was Sexy Scary Movie. I will also say it is completely unrelated to the Scary Movie franchise, so you might be disappointed <laughs> if you're watching it for its hilarious take on modern horror genres. However, if you are interested in seeing a bored housewife make up with a fictitious vampire that she imagines in a mirror, it's fucking brilliant. I don't know. <laughs> uh, the sequel wasn't as good. And I own both of them on DVD. Nah. They're in a box marked not porn to fool. <laughs> no, I'm wow. kidding. You I would not like not like... porn on a box. No, I do own both of those two. And I do have a porn stash. Of course I have a porn stash. Don't have as big a porn stash as I used to, because internet is not a thing. <laughs> yeah. I mean I can I can pull out this in the bathroom and just fucking jack off and be done in like five minutes. I don't fucking need to then go, okay, here's my catalog, here's my book. Pull out my little thimble so I don't crease the pages as I turn my porn up. Mm-hmm. I was kidding. No one ever wears a fucking thimble as to read porn. Yeah. <laughs> that would be the stupidest thing ever. <laughs> I, imagine that, I, I imagine it's going to be more difficult on Stacey's end, though, because she can only use one hand because she's trying to aim the watch and everything else. No. <laughs> no. Uh, no. Yep. Now, I will say one thing, going back to our original topic of history, mm-hmm. that I do really love that people need to check out. It's a book series, and it's a TV show. What's that? I've recommended it to Jimmy in the past. I showed him a couple of clips. At least people in the UK, because it's more UK history-based than it is more American, and that's horrible histories. Oh, is that the thing with the... um? Uh, you sent me a video of it with where I have all the King Henry's wives or something? Yeah, yeah. where I had all the stuff Oh, that was singing. wonderful. That was very yeah. interesting. What that is, is... The TV show is like a like a sketch show based on history, where they show like some of the most ludicrous facts, and then they have like a little rat tell you what stuff was real and what stuff wasn't. Because uh-huh. some of it's just going to be jokes, but some of it's going to be real. Like you can find out like Romans when they died could actually ask for one of their for their two of their slaves to fight to the death, so that they could join them in the afterlife. Okay, then. Didn't say it was a good thing, but it's a thing you could remember. But it's one of the, it's just one of those things. But, yeah, it's a case of what that does, same thing with the books, is I'm going to say not all the facts in there are accurate, but the people who do the show and the people who did the books originally said not all of our facts were 100% real. Mm-hmm. Some of them may just be hearsay, or they might be going off stuff that's been disproven since and various other stuff. They don't care. Because their idea is they get you interested in the history. Mm-hmm. And instead of going, oh, look at this educational thing and just bombarding you with the facts, it, I don't know what you call it, but it quenches your first enough that you may be like, like, let's say Pew's watched Horrible History. And she's like, oh, I really like that Henry VIII bit. I need to know more about him as a little kid. She would then rush out and maybe look in a local library, look at local stuff, more stuff to do with Henry VIII. Mm-hmm. Or because obviously internet's a thing, search online and find out Henry the Eighth stuff, mm-hmm. and, and just various stuff like that. Which means it's not forcing the facts into you; it's making you want to learn the facts, which makes you go out and do it on your own, which is always better. Forcing yeah. the facts into you? What is this a rape? <laughs> uh, it can be. <laughs> No, it, it, no, but you know what I mean. Like, like I if, if you ever see, like, I've seen some kids shows where they bombard you with the facts and only care about the facts, mm-hmm. and you're like, I'm bored of this shit. Like, as a yeah. kid, I was bored of that shit. You need proper but entertainment. As, as, yeah, but uh, like, as a kid watching like Look and Read on TV when it had, like, oh, here's an evil, here's a good dragon against this evil. Like, oh, what the fuck was he? He was like a pterodactyl monster guy. I think I showed Jim a clip of that when I was a kid. And the way they defeat him is the bad guy can't read. So the so one of the one of his hostages knits him a nice scarf. But when she holds it up in front of the camera to him, it actually says, "No, we're secretly being kidnapped. Come help us now." <laughs> Type situation, which I was like, "That's cool." And they had like songs like. 
card becomes code with me. I'm magic -y. That's way more fun. And I think, like, one thing that does that is, like, obviously Sesame Street over there did that. Oh, I love Sesame Street. It was the best. Or it, although a lot of it's been proven um, um, in Edgar because science changes, it got still got people interested in Magic School Bus, but that was, you know, along the science. Yeah. Uh, we're just, we're just now in a, re in a reboot on Netflix. Yes, which I've actually checked out, and it is still quality. Good to know. <laughs> yeah, well, isn't it now called Fuller Bus? Ha! <laughs> Jim would watch that. That wouldn't make any sense. <laughs> wouldn't it? It's a crossover. <laughs> it's the Fuller family on the bus. Oh, that would be interesting. In Japan. In ja <laughs> yeah, in Japan. Where the bus becomes a robot. Mm -hmm. Yes. You have to fight that catfish that swallowed the ring. Yep. And one of the Fuller girls would have the ability to turn herself into a boat, but would still have her huge breast warships. <laughs> that isn't a Japanese show. Okay. I, I only know that because it was on a Netflix show when I on that Joel McHale show when he showed that clip, and I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> um, <laughs> it's just really funny. Like on that Joel McHale show, it shows like an African soap. Where the daughter phones up her mother and the mother greets her with, hello, cunt. Which is fucking hilarious. Where she's like, hello, cunt, down the phone. But as he points out, no, it's cunt with a K, which is their word for child. And he's like, I know this. I've got a couple of cunts at home. <laughs> and he goes, and who can wait for next week when it's bring your cunt to work day? <laughs> <laughs> you need to watch that show, Pierre. You need to watch more of that Joe McHale show on Netflix. It's fucking oh, awesome. I love it. I can't get enough of him. I know. It's on every Sunday. You might like that show as well, Jim. It's on Netflix. Feel free to check that out. I will make a note of it. Noted. But yeah, obviously, uh, which that's part of the wonderfulness of this is just the various topics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like I would ask, what was everyone's favorite? thing when you were learning history in school? I like, loved uh, learning ancient history. I found ancient history really more interesting than anything modern. And I like when we got to recreate things from like ancient times only using the supplies that they would have available. Like we made like a tiny like version of like an Indian tent or something, like a scale one and we only had the stuff available. So that was interesting. I could see that. I, I vaguely remember that. That's fine. But uh, what was yours then, Jim? Um, I I always enjoyed studying the uh, the two world wars personally. I was thought that was an interesting era, especially looking at you know, okay, here's how the first world war happened, and then looking at how the first world war directly caused the second world war through this, that, and the other thing, and then the triggers that led into that world war. Now it was kind of almost a continuation of the same thing. Yeah, because I believe at the end of the first world war. Hitler arrived back in his DeLorean and spoke to someone and was like, it's about your kids, quick, we've got to stop them. And that's how they carried on the wars. Yes. It's also possible that's not how that happened. No. Well, fun fact for you, despite what WWE says, Hitler was the invention of the Elimination Chamber. Ah. <laughs> that's way too harsh, but it is a really funny joke. I mean, but I'm sorry. No. Yeah, I'll admit, one thing that was funny as a kid, which I don't know if Pew felt the same way, was how they treated ancient Greece history compared to what they should do. Okay. Ancient Greece history, like Medusa and stuff like that, like all their god stuff, but was clearly mythical. Mm-hmm was taught in history class. It seriously is. Like, I went to Greece, and they treat this shit like history. Like, it totally really happened. Like No, I just mean, <laughs> I just mean over here and stuff, it's treated in, it's taught in history class because they won't allow it in religious education. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons they said is kids find that more interesting than they do Christian religions. I think it's better written. Like, it it's is. more interesting. Yeah. 
it's true. Yeah, it's got better it's characters, bit... better stories. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, in the Bible, they have a, like the, the Christian Bible. There's a talking snake, mm-hmm. and he tells Eve eats an apple. Ooh. In the Egyptian, oh, it's like in the Greek Bible or religions, whatever I say, in the ancient Greek mythology ones, there's a snake who has extra snakes as hair, and when she looks at you, you fucking turn to stone. And you know how, that's way cooler and, than eating and apple. you know how she got to turn to stone because she was cheating on um she was um, well, actually the mistress of with poseidon and like athena was going there because she was dating poseidon at the time and then she's like no man you shall never look at another man again and that's when she got the ability to turn people to stone because any man who looks at her turns to stone because athena got super pissed at her yeah actually i, I believe what actually happened was in a Hercules and Aladdin crossover. <laughs> a young woman called Medusa found an ancient lamp, rubbed it, and out came a genie. And she goes, I wish that any man who looks at me would get hard. And the genie's like, your wish is granted. Insert racist shtick. Woo. And then disappears. What she didn't realize is they're not going to get her sexually aroused. They're just going to turn to stone. <sighs> And then she was like, curse you, monkey paw, which made less sense because it was a lamp, but it worked. <laughs> that is a fact. Look it up. <laughs> Jim wants me to teach history to people. <laughs> <laughs> like when doctors say, eat your vegetables. Nothing bad's ever happened to vegetables. I always show them attack of the killer tomatoes. <laughs> I know what you're going to say, tomatoes are fruit. If you want to see another man wrapping a vegetable, show him veggie tails. <laughs> oh, that's cringeworthy. Oh, where is my hairbrush? Oh, where is my hairbrush? That, that's, kind of, that's the only one of theirs I like, is the where's my hairbrush song. Fair enough. But just that 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 drives the point though. I mean, which like, that that kind of drives the point home of you talk about okay, you know, in terms of sort of you know, which religion is more interesting? It's like, okay, which religion got a series, you know, had to resort to okay, we're gonna have a series of talking vegetables to get our religion over, and which religion said, Okay, we're gonna have a kick ass series of video games about our religion, the most recent incarnation of which we reviewed two hours ago. Not entirely true. Because the Christian religion was also based upon like it was like a fanfic about the judaism religion yep which spawned superman which has had successful (laughs) video games and stuff based upon it that is true that's true there is there is logic in what you say and i would say to you what does everyone remember more superman or the john morrison hercules film who's john morrison was in a hercules film (laughs) He was at the same oh, time. God. The Rock and Hercules film. They okay, came out then. at the same time. That's what's fucking funny. So that you can imagine funny. which one eclipsed the other one. Yeah. <laughs> it was the Rock one. Yeah. That's... Yeah, that happened. No, that actually did happen. That's not one of my stupid facts. No, that actually <laughs> did happen. I'm sure. Another fun fact, William. Lego have officially announced a new video game coming this spring. Nice. Lego Bible, where you can play as like Judas and you like destroy stuff and build a cross to hang Jesus on it. It's fun. Isaac, I'm really sure this isn't real. (laughs) No, that one's not real. I will say there is a leaked one, which I hope is real, where it turns out there's a Lego DC supervillains game coming, which is going to be like a twist on the superheroes, Lego superhero games that they do. I'm like, oh, I'd play that. I, I would be I would be for that if they based it on the premise of the comic book Forever Evil. I'd be for that just because their previous games have been so fun. I just want it to be fun. Fair. Plus, I would I would like it to be like the villains trying to beat the heroes, maybe seeing them do it. It'd just be fun. Yeah, okay. But yeah, we've gone, we gone for a lot of topics so far. We have. From <laughs> Netflix to well from history to netflix to lego yeah jesus being hung on lego crucifix speaking of lego if you're looking for um a full or part-time job lego land apparently is already hiring people even though their park's not built yet good to know but if you build it they will come 
They will. Oh. Starting, <laughs> their contracts are starting soon. The funny, the funny thing about that is I'm relatively sure that that tagline was also taking word for word for the Field of Dreams porn parody. <laughs> it probably was. I mean, the one word we spelt slightly differently with a U. Right, exactly. But although that's something I'd feel sorry for. Anyone working in Legoland? Well, not now as much, but a few years ago, they felt sorry for anyone working in Legoland. I did look at their page, and they looks like they get like about like um really decent benefits and stuff. So even if the pay That's, shitty, until you like you know get a better job, you get benefits. The pay wasn't the reason. Uh. I know someone who works in a Lego store, mm -hmm. like, and it's like a Lego Land spin-off store kind of because it's not like the full lego yeah. experience yeah. like it's got a discovery center right and they said once the lego movie was released everything is awesome played on a loop there um. almost constantly <laughs> which it's like working retail i like most people i know that work retail fucking hate christmas songs because that's all <laughs> they hear for like the eight hour that. shift is yep. fucking Christmas music. Personally, me, I'd be like, fucking Christmas music, yeah, and I can rock out to Christmas music. If I heard it for eight hours on the room and come home and someone puts on Christmas music, yeah, I'd probably be, no, don't do this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. given that the, the Lego part is mostly like, or a lot, at least if um, it's going from the one that I've been to, there's a lot of outside, so you shouldn't be trapped too much with music unless you're um, indoors. So that has that benefit. Yeah, although, to be fair, the one I went to, the Legoland I went to, actually had speakers around the park with general music, <laughs> you can't like the, it. Like the yeah. Disney parks do, where they can put yeah. tunes in. Admittedly, it was tunes of those specific areas. However, with the one with that store, where the, the, it's more enclosed like that, and at the time of the film, they were pumping out everything that's awesome as much as they could, to be fair, when I went to Legoland, it was a few years after that. It, it died down a bit, thank God. As I said, you can't escape it. No, you cannot run. You cannot hide. It will find you. Now, now my, now my follow-up question to that is, after it came out, did they start mixing it in with the Lego Batman theme song? <laughs> Apparently, they didn't do any of the Lego Batman music. Oh, that sucks. Or the Lego Ninjago ones, which I like the Lego Ninjago movie. I will say that was awesome. I have not seen that yet. I should see that. It's awesome. It teaches you how to pronounce the word Lloyd pro properly. Ah. The Lloyd. The Lloyd, okay. The Lloyd. The Lloyd. Which is really funny because the main villain is one of the hero's fathers. That's not a spoiler. It's revealed really early on. Because yeah, everyone green, fucking knows this. Yeah, exactly. It's green, green Ninja's dad, yeah. Yeah. He mentions to him, he's like, the Lloyd. He's like, it's just Lloyd. He's like, no, I know what it is. I named you. <laughs> L L O Y D, Le Lloyd. Is he French? Like La Lloyd? Like La Otter? <laughs> yeah. You know, obviously, that's just how you spell Lloyd, but it's really fucking funny if Le Lloyd, and you're like, no, it's just Lloyd. <laughs> but yeah. Did you have anything else to add on history, Jim? Um, Any shocking views to share with people? No, not that I can come up with. Really? Just, Before we were recording, you literally talked about how you were going to talk, give the heartfelt speech you gave to become class president of your school, in which you actually gave a case for why slavery should never have been abolished. No, that never happened. And according to you, according to you, F those chocolate people. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. That, that no. was an exact quote. No, <laughs> it was. No, no. <laughs> Something about on Blackest Day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> he doesn't hate all the chocolate people. I'll just say that right now. He does have a Bill Cosby poster in his room. I will say. <laughs> so he's pro pedophilia. <laughs> <laughs> I think this may be the meanest I've made, Jim. It might be. <laughs> now, obviously, all of that was a joke. Yeah. We here at the peasant of mine, not called James, do not agree with slavery. <laughs> <laughs> 
but no, what like what, was any of interesting things you wanted to build, bring up our history? Um, just to be aware of the world around you, because I mean, history is being written every day. Um, especially in eras like this, where you have these drastic things of, I mean, the Korean War is ending. I mean, that's kind of historic. That's pretty damn historical. Also, um, Iran might get nukes again, so that's also yeah, pretty that. historical. <laughs> yep. I will also just point out for the record as well, one thing we should learn from history, mm-hmm. and this is going to sound meaner than it should do. I don't mean it to be mean, Jim. Mm-hmm. Christians have killed as many people in wars and in favor of their God and brutalized people for their God and terrorized people for their gods as other religions. So don't just hate people just on their religions alone. Oh, yeah. Because, uh, I don't know, let he who is without sin, I don't know, blame and go, ha ha, it's you, or whatever the quote is. But basically, I don't know, I didn't read that book. But don't spoil it. (laughs) <laughs> don't spoil it. I don't. I don't want to know how it ends. I mean, someone gave me a major spoiler the other day on Twitter with hashtag Jesus died for your sins. I was like, oh, for fuck's sake! I was about to read that book. Yeah. And then, like, oh, but Easter he came back. I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake! He said, you, you just literally just spoil it again. I'm about to say it this way: if you want to understand that, basically, just take the '80s animated Transformers movie and just replace Optimus with Jesus, and you know the story. Yeah, Jesus. pretty much. Jesus was replaced with Rodimus Christ? <laughs> I don't remember Rodimus Christ. I'm going to have to do some more research. <laughs> but no, it's a case of... With the... With the, with the, the only reason I mentioned that is, like I said, I don't... A lot of people blame, oh, boo all Muslims or boo all this religion. I don't think you should, because I feel all religions have done that in the past. That doesn't mean all religions are inherently evil. That does mean, like, in my opinion, religions do create good stories for people to live their lives by. Yeah. Because they, it get, teaches you basic good versus evil and being a good person. That's cool. Don't persecute people because they have a different god to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's stupid, and I'm, I'm just throwing that out there. Except for Jim. Fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh, of course. <laughs> Fuck him in his... Um, what was the god called? It was something like Santa, but misspelt. Was it Satan? Was that how you <laughs> called him? Saltine. <laughs> I think you said you like Big Red. Is that what you called him? <laughs> was it Evil? I can't, I can't remember yeah. how it was spelled. But I will say... I would, Bible wise, which is slightly funny, I will say I was really disappointed as a kid when we were in religious education. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that is an actual truth one of there's a story where I think it's Jesus goes up the mountain and Satan's trying to tame tempt him. I don't think that's in the Bible. It's there somewhere where Jesus is doing off doing something and really? Satan's there trying to tempt him. Yeah, Jesus had to go through, had to pass three trials. It was actually in the desert. Um, but he did have to pass three trials to prove his you know, worthiness to be Christ or whatever. Yeah, and one of them is the devil keeps trying to tempt him. Yeah. I was disappointed as a kid because I was saying this in my head. I'm picturing it. It's so awesome. I'm, it, it's building to a big climax of Jesus fighting the devil. And it ends with Jesus going, Nah, cool story, brah. I'm walking away. I'm like, oh, thanks. Mm -hmm. It's literally like if Superman just showed up in one of his comics when Lex is doing stuff, stops and just goes, no, then flies away. I'd be like, well, this was a shit comic. Yeah. I, I know you're not supposed to look at them the same way, but I want when, when they were building up, I, it would sound like it was going to be a fight between God and evil, and it's like, no. Mm. Yep. Also, I'm going to make case, another weird case, speaking of religion. The devil's not really bad. If you want a really good devil versus like God fight, I'd say watch the season finale of Supernatural season five, where literally they need vessels to um, walk on the earth, and literally the vessel of Michael, the arch- archangel, possesses um, Dean, and the supernatural uh, devil possesses uh, Sam. So they're literally devil versus like Michael Angel, and that's the best I don't know fight I've seen of good versus evil on TV <laughs> so far. 
Uh, they, they, they've done Devil in a few things. Yep. He was in Being Human in the final season. He was in Vampire Diaries final season. But mm-hmm. yeah, it's a case of, yeah, with that though, of just how that was portrayed, you, you know what I mean? You'd think you'd see, you'd see more of that, but no. Mm. But the reason I say the devil's not really evil is depending on which version of the Bible you're going with and stuff, God himself said, here you go, you can rule there. And I argue if the devil's really that evil and it's the core and is like responsible for manipulating so many people and causing them evil, why doesn't God just fucking fan us him out of existence? Because like people have to learn to resist the devil or whatever, or also he's an absentee father figure, and that's the whole point. Or yeah, <laughs> yeah. people have to learn to resist the devil because free will, blah blah blah. No, that's bullshit. That's like leaving a sword on a table and expecting children not to stab themselves if you leave the room and be like, no, you should have resisted that sword. It's like no, just take the sword away. No. They have to have it sit in there so Peter can learn not to erase his marriage and fuck up continuity. Mm-hmm. Don't remember that episode of Family Guy, but fair enough. Oh! <laughs> I'm kidding! Because <laughs> I know what Jim was on about, but he's yeah. not the devil. But still. Now, the devil needs to be there because he was hilarious in Karen Chicken. He was. Although he was a devil, he was just red guy. Red guy. <laughs> Hello, ladies. That guy was fun. That's all no, that's hello, <laughs> ladies. That's literally what you just did. No. <laughs> there was like a slight difference at the ending. There's, there's, a, there's a difference in tone. Charlie Adler was great. End. I like how Pew said the, the only difference was at the end because the asses were spread out a little bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit. <laughs> oh, no. But no, this has been a fun, pointless conversation. Yeah. It has. And I will allow Pew to pick next month's topic. Ooh. Oh, all right. We will, let, we will let you know at the time, so she has time to think. I was like, this. I can't pick one right now, but yeah. Because she will need a month to think, but <laughs> I don't mean, I don't mean not the She's way it's sounded. She's gotta feed the hamster so I can get the wheel running. It's a guinea pig, god damn it! You're ignorant. I don't, <laughs> I don't mean not the way it sounded because if we say it right now, it's gonna be a uh, cheesecake. Oh, fucking cheesecake, man. But no, like I can talk forever with cheesecake, but we won't. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, cheesecake or uh, toads riding skateboards. What? <laughs> is this like a weird battle toads thing? Uh, next month's topic is what if my cat had various different hats I could put on him each day of the week? I do have various different hats. <laughs> For your cat? Yes. Well, they're really hoods, you know, because hats don't stay on, but close enough. Yeah, it's because you're in the ghetto. Your cat has to be in the hood. <laughs> Thank you. But no, I moved out of the ghetto. Yeah, her cat likes to wear a little green hood and appear near mouse holes with, you have failed this house. It's a Pikachu hood. <laughs> it's, that's, no, that's even more ironic because he's a mouse Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. That looks the cutest. Which, FYI, before we hang up, I will say, who the fuck for Pikachu was a mouse? <laughs> Like, when you watched the anime and you played the games and you caught him and stuff, did anyone think he was a mouse? Who's closer to a bunny or a gerbil? Yeah, he looked like a rat. That's what, I thought he was a rabbit. And then when the Pokemon cards came out, because more people seemed to read those when I was a kid than they did the actual Pokedex as much. Mm-hmm. And you read Pikachu and it's like, oh, mouse, po- mouse Pokemon. Get the fuck out. Yeah. Uh, no. That's, that's clearly a typo. Next Pikachu card comes out. Mouse Pokemon. And there's also more Pokemon, like like um, Ratatata and stuff, that are more mouse-like. Yeah, exactly. Well, they're more rat-like. Which is still closer to a mouse. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It is. Yeah. Yeah. And they don't look anything like Pikachu. You're like, what? He's a, he's a mouse Pokemon? He doesn't do anything mouse-like. Mm. Although, if you Google what the Pika is, a Pika does look like a mouse. Fair enough. All right, then. But no, this was a pointless conversation. Obviously, because that's what that was the title. I don't mean that in a negative way. <laughs> yes. But yeah, join us next month where we find out which other minorities Jim's persecuted. No, <laughs> no. In his high school, in his high school electoral no. thing. To try and get no. <laughs> 
But back then, he went by a different name, and that was James Stalin. That's a fact. You can look that up. He even had a giant foam metal fist to which he was going to rule the school by. It was, it was weird. Did he mute himself? He did mute himself, which is even more funny. No. <laughs> uh... But, yes, we will talk to you next month. All right, bye. Yep. Pass pointless. See you next time, folks. This is pointless. Of the mind. No. <laughs> it was a good try, but no. This was pointless. Of the mind. <laughs> uh, and the rest was history, okay, fine, I guess. I'll wrap up.